Hey, 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 whatever, whatever, I'm going live. Fuck it. I just had to go live. At least had something left on. Uh, I had to go live. <clears throat> I ain't really check on a bunch of stuff. Just got back from hitting up the restaurant, getting a little something to drink. But, you know me, I smoke. But, what got on my nerves was what I've had to deal with multiple times in the past is this motherfucking thing that everybody keeps saying that Eminem is like the best rapper ever. They either say he's the best rapper ever or they say some shit like, oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't battle rap against Eminem. And I, years ago, I'm always ahead of my time. Before all this Benzino, Eminem controversy, before the, uh, the Nick Cannon, Eminem controversy, before other Eminem controversy, because uh, I think um, somebody else, well, it starts with an M, got into it with him too, make sure everything's straight. I think so. Uh, not only that, but... I was get, I was already saying things like this, how whack he was before, you know, like we gravitated towards Eminem based off of what? Before we get into that, a lot of people be like, hey, let's bat don't battle him, don't battle him, don't battle him based on what? Eight Mile, a movie that was acting. We'll get back to that. My thing is, there's multiple reasons why this white boy ended up in the rap game and ended up at a high level. Multiple reasons, great timing for, for the age and timing of it that it was in the early 2000s. Multiple reasons. And it was more on some industry plant. I ain't never seen such a purposely done industry plant in my motherfucking life. Even the name to me. The name to me long ago, I used to I used to call him just like the candy Eminem. And it seemed to me like they try to say Marshall Mathers M and M like an Eminem. And you know like Eminem candy. And to me like at the time there was a whole lot of rappers with rap names and it seemed like I could really see some like white producer or label exec saying, you know what, we need a new artist. And, you know, we'll, 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 we'll call him like, give him a hip name, like, you know, something, something like Eminem. You know, like the candy. Yeah, I, I, I could really see that. I literally can. I'm talking shit. But that's how corny they are, and that's how low of a threshold their ideas are within the game. Anyways, especially at that time, you had people like Snoop Dogg and this and that. You know, what I mean? so I could I could just see them trying to figure out a way to pitch a name, and Eminem came up, right? And that's cool because he kind of came out of nowhere, and then all of a sudden he's paired up with Drake. We didn't really know him until the Slim Shady. Uh, I'm Slim Shady. I'm the real. No, that's the later on. It's the. Uh, it's the, hi, my name is what? My name is who? My name, Chicka Chicka Slim Shady. Like, technically, it's the corniest fucking shit ever. He actually says, Chicka Chicka Slim Shady. Anybody that puts that in their rap without some actual DJ doing that shit over the motherfucking, you know, wax, and you're doing it, or, or some mix and master technician taking your voice or whatever, it's corny. Okay, I don't know where the fuck. Like, I grew up around that time, and I get it. So this is what it is. I never was an Eminem fan. I had homeboys. My old best friend was a big Eminem fan. He also was a big skater and skateboarder, and, you know, he act like he was really, really, really into extreme white boy sports type shit, which is cool. But it's the cosign with Dre, along with, along with the name dropping. Now, typically we think of name dropping. 
typically we think of name dropping. I got to make sure everything's straight, y'all. <laughs> typically we think of name dropping as um, somebody coming up to you, telling you some shit about who they know. Oh, you know, I was just kicking it the other day, you know what I'm saying? I ain't doing too much, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, Juvie was with me, but it, was, it wasn't nothing going on, you know what I'm saying? I mean, this kind of people I know, you know what I'm saying? It's just, you know, me and Elf Show, that's just like that one time that me and Trey Songs I had when, I tell you about me and Trey Songs. you know, typically that's what we think about name dropping. A nigga trying to get clout from somebody on some personal tip. Uh, by name dropping some people that they probably really don't even know and they're lying about, or if they're not lying, it was probably way more embellished than they let you believe whatever story they was telling. But typically that's the name drop scenario. And name dropping helps, right? If you get a picture of you and some celebrity, take a hit with me. If you get a picture of you and some celebrity together and put it on your Instagram, all of a sudden you get a bunch of likes, even if you was a nobody. But you sitting here next to somebody they like, and so all of a sudden that's what you call clout, right? Well, you can also get clout by talking shit about people. One of the biggest things I remember when Eminem came out with them whack ass songs back in the day was how much he was in the news. Oh my God. We have a rapper who's talking about the Spice Girls. He said something about such and such Spice and what he would do to Britney, Christina, Aguilera, whatever these white girls' names, I'm putting them all together. Whatever he's going to do to Britney Aguilera. And fucking that big white girl with the big birdie that they say. I don't know what her fucking name is. Anyway, I'm going all crazy. But he was just talking shit about random pop stars. And all of a sudden he was in the news everywhere. And he didn't have to be in the news. Right? But he was a white boy, quirky, in a white t-shirt. And he had Dr. Dre behind him. And he would talk about Dre every set. He would name drop Dre. I don't know. Somebody look up how many songs this nigga says Dre in. Just look it up. But he would name drop Dre all the time. You know, Dre's with me, blah, blah, blah. And Dre told me to such and such. You know, I, I, I really can't rap like him. It really ain't. So let me say a slight precursor to that. So you fast forward quite a bit later. And we're all finding out that he had all these songs talking hella shit about black people, black women. He's got songs literally that black bitches is black women are bitches and white women are great or something. L look it up, okay? Nick Cannon was going off a bat or whatever, but people try to give him a pass because he's been so much into hip hop. And, and they don't even want to look at it as being a plant. Like I said, an industry plant. There's no goddamn way if anybody started off known to be that racist in a song. I mean, it's one thing to have your racist views. It's another thing to have racist views talking to somebody that you're talking to face to face. It's another thing to have racist views and record it and talk to people about it. It's another thing to have racist views make a song that you want people to actually chant back and forth and repeat and go and put it on the internet. And, or at the time, it wasn't on the internet. This nigga wouldn't put it out on actual wax, put it out on actual CDs, put it out in the actual world. You know what I mean? So much so that he wanted his information of how racist he was against black people to be known. Now, all of a sudden, he's with Drake. And he gets the name drop Dre, left and right, left and right, left and right, I'm with Dre. Come on, it ain't like Dre seen this nigga motherfucker sitting around somewhere and all of a sudden was like, boy, I gotta get this boy. Because if if he was rapping the shit he was rapping prior, and I, I get it, there was other tracks that he had out, another album that whatever, you know. So maybe Dre heard that and whatever. But regardless, somebody brought that, brought that to him. 
But either Dre, either Dre also heard that other shit, the racist shit, or he didn't. They shielded him from it, or he just said, "Oh, I don't care." One of the two, but or three, I don't know what happened. But my thing is, and I'm about to get even closer to um, pulling up some shit. My thing is, people keep putting him in this top spot. He's a racist prior to being a plant. And the plant that got him in the industry and controversy with pop stars and name dropping love for all the black artists that he could think of is what got him popularity along with coming out during the time where the record labels and radio still has super duper 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 control and where they can plant people, especially within white black society, if you get a, a black cosign. If you go look at so many people in this industry, in the music industry, there's many of white folks that have some kind of black cosign they got to get. Somebody that they got to get on a track with. And they're like, yeah, this I, I fucks with this dude. Y'all should too. And they expect black people to fall in line. And typically, unfortunately, that typically does happen. We do end up falling in line and and going along with it. But okay, some of y'all might be sitting here saying, Sam, I think you're being harsh. I think you fucking bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I said Sam, whatever. That's my name. Whatever. Chef Bay. I believe you being harsh. I believe you. You know you bullshit and whatever. Well, let's pull up some lyrics because somebody told me he was some. This is what kind of prompted this whole thing because I hear it all the time, anyways. But somebody was like, he's one of the best rappers ever by a mile, and it's not even a not even a question. The best rapper ever. First of all, if we was gonna go by, if we was gonna go by his cadence and his delivery, it's. Annoying and corny. Hi, my name is what? My name is Chicken Chicken Slim Shady. You know, every once in a while, like he'll have a track that he go it it, it would sound kind of hard and like nowadays everybody want to talk like they got something to say, but nothing comes out with they move lives just a bunch of different reasons. Motherfuckers act like they forgot about Dre, and it was just like it's not really that cool, but it's kind of cool because it's. And so it's like, okay, it kind of sounds cool because the way that you're hitting the 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 hi hat type frequency in the in the track, it, it goes with the vibe, you know. And you said uh, something something a little cool, but that's not even no profound lyrics. Nowadays, everybody want to talk like they got something to say, but nothing comes out when they move their lips. Just a bunch of gibberish. And motherfuckers that look, they forgot about Dre. That's not like super hardcore lyrics. It ain't like he took something and made you think of something and took you to a place or told a story and you in his mind. Right? And that's why I'm about to pull up lyrics. Because people act like they forgot about Dre. I'm playing. People act like <laughs> And let me throw this in there before we get to the lyrics. I know I was said that, but once we get to the lyrics, it's really gonna bring it all out to light. But people also be like, Oh, I wouldn't battle him. I'm I'm scared. Oh Eminem is that one person you don't battle. And year ten plus years ago, I promise you, I promise you, I was like Battle him? Who is scared of what? Who has he battled? Other than in a movie. If you go by a movie where everybody's acting, well, okay. I mean, I guess he's the hardest nigga alive. Against who? Who are them niggas? The niggas that he... Even if you want to say it was based upon his real life and what ain't not happened in real life. Where them niggas at that he was rapping with and, and, and battling in real life? Obviously, they were some no-name ass niggas because nobody know them other than this movie that had to be told for you to know. That's if it's real. Otherwise, the whole story's made up. In my head, the whole story was made up, and it was some white boy. Wait, look, let's get us a rocky white boy story in the rap game. You know what I'm saying? 
he 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 gets beat down. You know, he comes from the trash. He gets beat down lyrically at these battles, and he comes back. You know, after his mom done went through all this drugs and shit and prostitution, I don't know what was going on, and and, and he and he starts hitting niggas left and right. You know what I'm saying? He wins a battle, and he takes it to the mainstream. Somebody tells Dre about him, and now Slim Shady is born. That's not enough information for me to be scared at all to rap against this white boy. Are you serious? Are you? It's everybody out here fucking loco that a movie has literally implanted in all of y'all's heads that Eminem, named after a goddamn candy, is one of the best rappers out there, and you're afraid to rap against him because he did because of what, what he did against Papa Dot or or whatever them niggas' name was in the show. And he, and the, I don't fucking know them niggas, and you don't either. Some leg, legendary, legendary to what? To the Hollywood screen movie that somebody wrote, nigga. Are y'all serious? Niggas have been putting this motherfucker in the top motherfucking rap shit for a while. And being, and I've said it for years. First of all, nigga, who has he rapped against? Spice Girls and Brit- Britney-, Britney Aguilera? I know, I'm saying, I'm playing around. Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera and, and the goddamn Nick Cannon and, and then, uh, Machine Gun Kelly, now Ben Zeno. That was just one. Y'all saw that cypher. He was like, that's an awful high coffee pie. Should I drop it or not on Donald Head's coffee? Yeah, you, you rapping about dropping a coffee pie on a man's head. That's an awful high coffee pot. Should I drop it or not? Get your Dr. Seuss ass the fuck on out of here, man. Are y'all serious with this shit, man? Let's pull up some goddamn lyrics. Let's pull up some motherfucking lyrics. So first of all, here's the top songs by Eminem. And of course, y'all might say, hey, these top songs listed are by sales, popularity. Those aren't his hardest songs, whatever, you know. But nigga, we gonna use them. You know, um, let, let, let's do this. Not Afraid, even though that song's whack. Anthem song, Have an Ass Nigga. I need a new anthem. <laughs> Not Afraid. Afraid lyrics. And, and you know what? The lyrics to this should actually make some kind of sense. It's one of those anthem songs. So it really should somewhat tell a a little bit of a story and whatever. So we're going to start here. I'm not afraid, yeah, to take a step. Okay, we're going to get past the uh, the hood. You can try and read my lyrics off of this paper before I lay (laughs) them. That's funny. I didn't mean to do that. (laughs) <laughs> it's like he's telling me, you can try to read my lyrics, nigga, if you want to on this live stream. Yeah, nigga, I am whack ass lyrics. <laughs> you can try to read my lyrics off this paper before I lay them. And I don't know the song, so I'm not going to say it like the, the way it goes. So it's going to sound whatever. But you won't take the sting out of the words before I say them. Ooh, he's going to say them first. Because eh. ain't no way I'm going to let you stop me from causing mayhem. <laughs> when I say I'm going to do something, I do it. I don't give a damn what you think. I'm doing this for me, so fuck the world, 
feed it beans. Feed it beans. It's gassed up. If it thinks it's stopping me. I'm going to be what I set out to be without a doubt, undoubtedly. <laughs> and all of those who lock down on me, I'm tearing down their balcony, your balcony. Okay, that's all right. No if, ands or buts, don't try to ask him why or how can he. From Infinite down to the last Relapse album, he's still shitting. Whether he's on salary, paid hourly, until he bows out or he shits his bows out of him. Whichever comes first, for better or worse, he's married to the game like a fuck you for Christmas. His gift is a curse. Forget the earth. He's got the urge to pull his dick from the dirt and fuck the whole universe. Let's go to the next song. Let, let, let's, you know, that wasn't profound lyrics. That's number 23. <clears throat> when I'm gone. Okay. When I'm Gone, there should be some good lyrics in there, right? A song called When I'm Gone. <laughs> right? There should be some good lyrics in a song called When I'm Gone. You know, something profound. I want y'all to do this for me. Put out some liquor for your boy. Remember them times we had. Remember life on the block with your boys and, you know, the this and your that. If that was a life. I don't know. Whatever. You know, paint the picture. That's what I envision. Let's go. You know what? Let me go back to genius. <clears throat> All right. Have you ever loved so much you'd give an arm for him? Give an arm for? Not the expression, no, literally give an arm for. When they... Know they're your heart, and you know you are their armor, and you will destroy anyone who will try to harm her. But what happens when karma turns right down and bite you, and everything you stand for turns on you to spite you? What happens when you become the main source of her pain? Daddy, look what I made. Daddy, dad's got to go catch a plane. Daddy, where is mommy? I can't find mommy. Where is she? I don't know. Go play, Hallie, baby. Your daddy's busy. Daddy's writing a song. This song ain't got, ain't going to write itself. I'll give you one underdog, then you got to swing by yourself. Then turn right around on that song and tell her you love her and put hands on the mother of her spitting image. So, I mean, I, guess, I think this is during that time when this nigga was like on that relapse shit or something. I don't fucking know. It, 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 that shit was boring. He didn't really say a bunch of profound things to paint that picture. I mean, he really was just kind of tell you what was going on. Yeah, I was making a pot of ramen noodles, and Haley came in. And when Haley came in, I told her, these records, I still got to spin. And these records ain't going to spin themselves. So tell your mama I'm putting things back on the shelf. And then grab me a fifth of hen so I can probably eventually go in. Like, okay, all right, <laughs> okay, <laughs> if you want to say that's lyrical as hell, let's go to uh, something else, let's go to something else, uh, without me, without me, right, that's early days, because people say, 
He was better in his early days without me. We know that one. Now, I might be able to spit that the way that it goes. Have you ever just sat here and read through the lyrics? Now, I'm going to read. You know, before I get to these lyrics, let's take a pause from the Eminem lyrics and let's look up top Jay-Z songs, right, right? <clears throat> so you take top 50 rank, top 20 rank Jay-Z songs, right? Show me what you got, uh, anything. Let me just do show me what you got. Jay-Z, show me what you got, lyrics. And we're going to go with the first verse, just a comparison. Right, we're gonna hit the first verse. That's the chorus, first verse. Give the drummer some shit. I already gave the drummer the summer some. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. It already started off cool because it, it's just the swag in those two lines. Give the drummer some shit. I already gave the summer some. It's the winner's turn. Hobie Hobie's. The coldest. I'm getting better with time. I'm like Opus One. Young, no two alike, like a snowflake. Okay, show me what you got, babe. And I don't know this song, so I can't say it like it goes. But words is slurring, engine purring, mommy front, but I'm so determined. Shot a patron, now she in the zone. I ain't talking about the two, three, mommy in the zone like the homie two, three. Jordan or James makes no difference. We are all balling the same. Nigga, I'm Mike Jordan of recording. Nigga, you might want to fall back from recording. Shit, what you write is not important. So it forced him to go for the hype. For being brave, they might, they may applaud him. But misery, I I will assure them, oh baby, I'm just I just ignore them. Truth or dare, mommy, listen or learn. I got a drop. I just took off the top. It's your turn. So what you like about that is it's got a swag to it. Just word wise, I fucked it up with the way that I delivered it. But the words, you know, and and the subject matter is just a boastful. Uh, verse talking shit. I'm I'm that nigga type shit. Mommy balling, you know what I'm saying? Like two, three, like Jordan. James don't make no sense to me. We all balling, you know, shit like that. It just it just paint a picture of what's going on in his life at this particular time. It, you know, it could have been better. It wasn't like most profound, so I ain't gonna say that was some profound lyrics. But you know, we'll we'll do one more and then we go we'll we'll go back to the Eminem shit. And that was nineteen ninety nine shit. Old, old ho. So let's say, um let's do It Can't Be Life. This can't be life. That was a good one right there. Um Jay Z this can't be life. See, I was born in sewage, born to make bomb music, flow tight like I was born Jewish, <laughs> used the streets as a conduit. I kept arms, 38 longs inside my mom's Buick. At any given moment, Sean could lose it. Be on the news, iron cuffs, arms through it, or stuff with embalming fluid. Shit, I go. I'm shit. I'm going through it. Mom's dukes too. Tears streaming down her pretty face. She got her palms to it. My life's wild. My life is getting too wild. I need to bring some sort of kind of. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> I need to bring some sort. Kind comma, damn! I need to bring some sort kind of calm to it. About to lose it. Voices screaming, "Don't do it!" It's like ninety three, ninety four, about the year that Big Mag dropped and Illmatic rocked. 
out of every rag drop in the West had it locked. Come on now. Out of every rag drop down in the West had it locked. Everybody doing, like, it just painted that picture quickly with a, just a line. Everybody doing them. I'm still scratching on the block. Like, damn, I'm going to be a failure. Surrounded by thugs, drugs, and drug paraphernalia. Cops, courts, and their thoughts is to derail us. Three time felons in short with jealous thoughts. Trying to figure where your mail is. Guesstimate the weight you selling. So they can send shots straight to your melon. Wait. It gets worse, baby mama. Water burst. Baby came out stillborn. Still, I got to move on. Though my heart's still torn, life gone from her womb. Don't worry, it's meant to be. It'll be soon. Just can't be like, man, you know what? That was a lot. That was a lot in there. You know what I mean? To be honest, and I, the way I read it, because it's like, the way that they write this, they don't write it on the actual rhyme. Uh, they don't end the sentence on the actual uh, hit. And I don't know why they write it like that. Typically, if you write it out, you motherfucking rap. The last word on that line is going to be the rhyming word or that ends. You know, you don't fucking combine them and mix them and shit like that. And if I knew the track, I'd be able to spit a little bit better for you, but... Either way. I mean, I know that track, but it's been a long time since I actually heard that verse. But I know the track, It Can't Be Life. At least the hook and shit. But, as you can tell, those were some lyrics that you can actually get something and gain something from. It's just not some white boy spitting randomness. Let's look, let's look at, at what I mean by that. So let's go back to this. Eminem... And this is uh, without me. Okay. I've created a monster. Because nobody wants to see Marshall no more. They want Shady. I'm chopped liver. <laughs> well, if you want Shady, this is what I'll give you. A little bit of weed mixed with some hard liquor. Some vodka That'll jumpstart my heart quicker than a shot when I sh get shot at the hospital by the doctor when I'm not cooperating, when I'm rocking the table while he's operating. You waited alone, waited this long, now stop debating, because I'm back, I'm on the rag, and ovulating. <laughs> what? <laughs> You ovulate, nigga, and you on the rag? I hope you talking about the doctor, nigga. What the fuck? <laughs> I know you got a job, Miss Cheney, but your husband's heart problems complain, complicating. So the FCC won't let me be or let me be, so let me see. They tried to shut me down on MTV, but it feels so empty without me. So come on and dip bum on your lips. Fuck that. Come on your lips and some of your tits. And get ready because this shit's about to get heavy. I just settled all my lawsuits. Fuck you, Debbie. This is who y'all really fuck with, dude. What is he talking about? <laughs> Even if you boasted about yourself, and it's just going to be a boastful verse, like, come on your lips, fuck it, come on your tits, and, 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 and you know, that's not horrible, you know, to say in the track. I've heard worse. But what the fuck are you talking about? Let's do one more Eminem track. I'm going to give y'all one more stand. Or you lose yourself. We can do um, 
stand because lose yourself is another one of them goddamn anthems. Stand. Just gonna go to the verse. I don't know how it's delivered. Verse one. Dear Slim, I wrote you, but you still ain't calling. I left my cell, my pager, and my home phone at the bottom. I sent two letters back in autumn. You must not have got them. That's not horrible. Yeah. Little Dr. Seuss-ish. But, you know, ain't nothing wrong with it. There probably was a problem at the post office or something. Sometimes I scribble addresses too sloppy when I jot them. But anyways, fuck it. What's up, man? How's your daughter? He done spent half a goddamn verse. Uh, okay. My girlfriend's pregnant too. I'm about to be a father. If I have a daughter, guess what I'm going to call her? I'm a neighbor, Bonnie. <laughs> Where is these dope ass lyrics at? I read about your Uncle Ronnie too. I'm sorry. <laughs> I had a friend kill herself over some bitch who didn't want him. Where'd that come from? I know you probably hear this every day, but I'm your biggest fan. I even got the underdog shit that you did with Scam. I got a room full of posters and your pictures, man. I like the shit you did with Rockets too. That shit was fat. <laughs> what? Anyways, I hope you get this, man. Hit me back. Just to chat, truly yours, your biggest fan. This is Stan. <sighs> what is this motherfucker talking about? <laughs> What is this motherfucker talking about, dude? If you think I'm tripping, let's take somebody ratchet like Juvenile. Let's say Juvenile, not back that thing. Let's say back that ass up lyrics. Fuck it, you know. <laughs> Can't be no worse. <laughs> Girl, you working with some ass? Yeah. You bad, yeah. Make a nigga spend some cash, yeah. His last, yeah. Hoes frown when you pass, yeah. They mad, yeah. You gonna ride in the Jag, yeah. With that head, what? You can smoke to buy a bag, yeah. Of grass, yeah. Got money y'all can flash, yeah. And trash, yeah. I'm big timer, nigga, yeah. Pull your trigger, yeah. A player, hater, flipper, yeah. Gray flilly, yeah. I be slaying woo, yeah. At the hood, yeah. Let it be understood, yeah. It's all good, yeah. Got a nigga scheming large, yeah. Only hard, yeah. A smooth little broad, yeah, from the project. A young nigga do a trick, yeah, on a dick, yeah. <laughs> you claiming you want a picture and that ain't shit, yeah. The nigga with the money, yeah, don't act funny, yeah. Got birds and I'm running, yeah, about a hundred, yeah. Anyway. Now, that's some ratchet-ass nigga shit right there, you know. And that's understandable. Nobody out in the world is saying that Juvenile is one of the dopest lyricists in the game. 
Hell no. But Juvie got a flow. Juvie got a vibe to him that brings out a certain cool party energy, you know? And certain people have that type of shit. And there's nothing wrong with that. Eminem ain't got that. He ain't got a vibe that makes people want to come out and girls want to come out and shake their ass to it. Hell no. To goddamn, this looks like a job for me. So everybody just follow me. It feels so empty without me. Hell the fuck no. Ain't no girl like, oh, bitch, this is my motherfucking song. No, that's not happening. Right? And on top of that, like, the lyrics ain't telling you shit half the time. And the ones that actually act were possibly some type of song. Um, one of my headphones, I mean, my one of my mics is about to lose power. But the one, one of the ones that was actually like a song, really, I need to get off here. Um. Was on some dreary old regular ass shit like that. St- that song Stan. Hi, right, it's me, Stan. I hope you. Would you like your soda in a can? <laughs> Just tell me what's the plan. We'll get there if we can. Keep going. I'm the man. Put your hands up. Call me Stan. <laughs> it was like. Okay, nigga, that's the dope lyrics that y'all think. And then you got to think again, who is he be, who does he battle? The people in his songs? He ain't been around no goddamn battle rap circuits and eliminating niggas so much that they just had to go in here and put them to the side like he was the dopest. No, the nigga made a movie written by some producers. You know what I'm saying? We'll, we'll make him the best rapper out there. And motherfuckers ate that up for years, dude. Ate it up. There was time I thought Sermon of Song, I never was a big fan of him, but there was times I thought like they forgot about Dre song and certain songs was kind of cool. But I mean, they gave him a Dre co-sign, which, gave, which it get, literally gave him access to a beat producer and engineer at the time, even though beats, whatever at the time, who was super popular while they had hella control. That's how you have an industry plan, man. There's many of them out there. Don't get duped. Don't keep falling for the okie doke. This motherfucker ain't that dope. This motherfucker ain't top 100. It's a large white audience. They're more adept to actually listen to him than they are to listen to us on a mass scale. Not to say they don't listen to us on a mass scale, because they do. But he's a lot easier of a pill to swallow for some ha- for some of their households. So his numbers get risen above some of ours. But numbers ain't always telling the full story. So, anyway, got to get my home up, get my motherfucking ass off of here. Uh, do what you do, stay where you stay, be what you be. Is that going to be my new shit? I don't know. Probably not. I'm going to figure it out.